Hi, Matt B here and welcome to M2M, the channel that burns the nonsense. And welcome to this new series simply called Moon Hoax, where I debunk the most common Moonland hoax theories, both old and new, from the era of Apollo from 1969 to 1972. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon, select all, and you'll be notified when I upload more videos. And if you'd like the video, then please hit the thumbs up. But the best thing for you to do if you comment below in each video, let me know how I'm getting on. And if there's any moon hoax theories that you'd like me to add, then let me know in the comments below and I'll look at adding it. So anyway, let's get on with the video and roll the credits. Number seven, humans cannot survive going through the Valanum belts. This is the most hotly contested issue for the conspiratards, yet there is a total misunderstanding of what the Van Allen belts are and how NASA dealt with them. To the conspiratards and others, the Van Allen belts prove that NASA never went to the moon because they argue that if the crew went through the Van Allen belts, they would have received a lethal dose of radiation and die, either during or shortly after the missions, or even burn to a crisp. But as we know, that didn't happen. Mention the word radiation and conspirators freak out and think of the atom bomb and Hiroshima and Chernobyl and associate it with death and horrible burns. But the Van Allen belts, although they have the potential to be deadly, they're really not as bad as all that. We have to consider that there are two main types of radiation that we need to concern ourselves with. The first is electromagnetic radiation. This covers everything from radio waves through to infrared and heat right through to gamma rays. That is the electromagnetic spectrum. The second type of radiation that NASA was mostly concerned about is charged particles of protons and electrons. These particles flow out from the sun as the solar winds and because they have a positive or negative charge they react with the Earth's magnetic field. Some are attracted to the poles where they enter the atmosphere and react with the air to create the northern and southern lights and the rest are captured into the bands of magnetic fields around the Earth where they form the Van Allen belts. These belts of charged particles consist of an inner and outer belt and a short-lived third belt which appears when the Sun has its biggest solar flares. These bands range from between 1,000 and 60,000 miles above the Earth's surface with the inner belt more concentrated around the magnetic equator whereas the outer belt is more spread out. This type of radiation is also known as ionizing radiation, which means that it has enough energy to knock out electrons from atoms that make up the spacecraft and even the crew inside, which can cause tissue damage if there is enough high enough exposure. The main radiation NASA needed to be concerned about in the Valana belts though were the high energy protons and electrons, because the low energy protons and electrons can be stopped by just a few millimetres of the aluminium the outer skin of the command module was made of. So whilst we can shield against the radiation to a degree, provided it's not too strong, there are other things that NASA engineers and the mission planners knew about. And one of these where the thickest parts are and where the most high energy protons and electrons are in the Van Allen belts. This came from research carried out by physicist James Van Allen from data collected from America's first satellite, Explorer 1. Not only that, NASA also knew how the human body reacts to various types of radiation. But the important part is the course which the, each of the Apollo spacecraft took. They avoided the thicker and lethal parts of the inner belt completely, and they only went through the thinnest parts of the outer belt. Also, all the astronauts wore dosimeters to measure their personal radiation exposure levels during the flight. And the amount of radiation the Apollo crews received during the flights to and from the moon was less than that of the yearly allowed dose of someone working in the nuclear industry of that era and regularly dealing with radioactive materials. Yet in the end, the simplest answer to why the Valenambus radiation belts were not the killer issue that some people think it is, is the Apollo missions didn't need to go straight through the Valenambus belts they basically flew around the most deadly areas and were not in the less dangerous areas for long enough for it to be a problem. So why go through it when you can just go around it? And that is as true as today as it was then for future manned missions beyond Earth's orbit. So there it is, 
another moon conspiracy theory added to the fire.